a guest speaker for a commitment of remembrance by Lucas Duffy, if you come forward. Thanks, young fella. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for being here today on this beautiful Anzac Day morning. I'd first like to extend my acknowledgements and thanks to Julie Bolsh, President of the Kingston Friends of the Avenue. On this very day, one year ago, I bumped into Julie at the Commercial Hotel here in Kingston whilst having our traditional Anzac Day lunch with family. She asked whether I'd like to speak on behalf of my family at this service, and without hesitation, I said yes. Julie's contribution to the Avenue of Honour and indeed the wider community is simply extraordinary, as you all would agree. I would also like to thank my great uncle, Kevin O'Connor, who has been instrumental in documenting our family story. Kevin visited Europe in 2000, where he sought to retrace the steps of his late father. I extend this thanks to Pat O'Connor, brother of Kevin, who over the years has shared the many stories told by his father to family members such as myself. And finally, to Kevin and Pat's brothers, my great uncle John and dear grandfather Des, both of whom sadly are not with us today. Their efforts in continuing our family tradition on this day for many years demonstrated their unwavering commitment to preserve the legacy of their father. Today is a special day for my family, as I'm sure it is for many of yours. It is a day where all Australians both reflect and commend the efforts of all ex-service men and women who have served our country, those who have gone before us, and those who continue to serve. One of those people is my great-grandfather, John Thomas O'Connor. My mother's side of the family, the O'Connor clan, has been coming to the Avenue of Honour for many years now, long before I was born. Here's where our family would gather every Anzac day below the large Dutch elm tree. My earliest memories of these visits were my sister and I, along with our cousins, playing next to our grandfather's tree and in the surrounding fields. During these years, I never quite understood the true importance of this family tradition and indeed the significance of this day. As we grew older, however, this annual occasion meant so much more to us. Having a third generation connection to the Avenue of Honour, my sister and I are proud to be able to continue to visit every year along with extended family. Over recent years particularly, I've also taken a great interest in the story of my great grandfather and wish to share just some of his story with you all today. John, also referred to as Gunnar O'Connor, enlisted for the First World War in March of 1917 in Queenscliff. He was attached to the 36 Heavy Artillery Group and at just 22 years of age, would join the Western Front in Flanders in November of 1917, near the France-Belgian border. My great-grandfather was a trained gunner, equipped with howitzers, which are large guns with a range of up to 10,000 yards. These guns, once in position, were effectively immovable. This is because special trenches had to be constructed to accommodate the recoil of the guns and for storage for their heavy ammunition. By the time he arrived on the Western Front, a change in war tactics led by the well-respected Allied General John Monash made the role of artillerymen more crucial than ever before. These tactics developed by Monash involved the use of strategic and calculated heavy artillery shelling in conjunction with the movement of troops, as opposed to the two being a separate operation. While sounding simple now, this concept was revolutionary at the time and played a major role in swinging the momentum of the First World War in the Allies' favour. One extraordinary story which I was once told by my late grandfather was of his dad, Gunnar O'Connor, and his unit suffering a direct hit on an ammunition dump. This was all during a major offensive by the German forces following the winter stalemate of 1917-1918. In the mayhem of battle, he was blown up into the air suffering a gas burn and a shrapnel wound in his lower arm, which he would carry for the rest of his life. The unit was forced to pull back from their initial position on the battlefield and on one occasion moved some 10 kilometres down the side of the valley before they were again forced to move just days later. What I found extraordinary was just how vulnerable troops would have been during these retreats. The pace at which the unit was able to move was slow, forced to lug enormous artillery guns weighing many tonnes across farmland hills and roads, which were largely exposed to enemy forces. My great uncle Kevin documented this during his visit to where his father fought. 
Kevin walked along one of these very stretches of roads on a hot summer's day in 2000 and detailed just how chaotic and risky these ideals must have been. Our troops encountered horrific conditions during their time on the Western Front, constantly exposed to rain, mud and unsanitary conditions. My great-grandfather shared stories of the war to his children and often referenced the knee-deep mud they encountered, with many forced to persevere and struggle through it, all whilst under enemy fire. These stories like these reflect the senseless and dehumanising nature of war and the unimaginable physical and psychological toll it takes on those involved. John O'Connor spent a year in Flanders on the Western Front by the time of the armistice in November of 19, 1918. Of the 165 other rank officers in his unit, 32 of them would never return home. Fortunately for my great-grandfather, he would sail home in April of 1920, alive, but perhaps like many, never quite the same. This is just a small part of one family story. As I look upon the names of those on the trees here in Kingston, I wonder the story behind each name. I marvel at their courage, their sacrifice, and their selflessness. I would like to finish with a message to all of you in attendance today, young or old. This message is for you all to continue this age-old tradition to honour those who have served on Anzac Day and recognise their immense contribution to our nation. Without them, we simply wouldn't share in the freedom and prosperity we enjoy today. So, to you all, bring your kids, brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, along to services like these. It is not only noble, but it is our duty to do so. Not only does it provide them with an opportunity to learn about Australia's unique history, but it will also fill them with a greater sense of gratitude and appreciation for our way of life. I hope that this day gives you all this perspective on life, one of appreciation for what we have instead of worrying about what we don't have. I wish for all people, particularly my generation, to feel the same way. I'm beyond grateful that from a young age, I was taught about the importance of this day. I was lucky in the sense that my great uncles, along with my grandfather, made an occasion of this day long ago, visiting their father's tree and visiting it every Anzac day. And now it has been and continues to be a tradition which my family has not only embraced, but has cherished for many years and hopefully many years to come. As we gather today, let us renew our commitment to peace, justice and reconciliation, both at home and abroad, and let us honour the Anzac spirit by promoting mutual understanding, cooperation and compassion, and by standing up for the values that unite us as a community. I'd again like to thank you all for listening and being here, lest we forget.